Today we're going to explore a little bit of complex exponentiation. So in particular, we're going to calculate 1 plus 2i raised to the power 3 plus 4i. And this is maybe extending off the very popular YouTube math problem of like finding i to the i power but making it more general. Maybe even more general would be something like a plus bi to the power c plus di. But as we see, this is like maybe general enough to get the idea of what's going on for an even larger problem. And in order to do this, we're going to use the polar form for a complex number. And sometimes this is given in a complex exponential format, which is what we'll use. So let's recall if we've got a number z in the complex plane, which can be written rectangularly as x plus i y, where if we build a line segment from the origin to this point z, that line segment forms an angle theta with the positive real axis, and that line segment has length r, then all of these parts are related by the following formulas. So we have r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That follows pretty quickly from the Pythagorean theorem. And then we have tangent of theta equals y over x. That's by the definition of the tangent function as opposite over adjacent. Furthermore, because of Euler's formula, we can write z as r e to the i theta. Okay, so that's good. Now that we've got this setup remembered, let's jump into our problem. And I'd like to point out that standard rules for exponentiation work for complex numbers, and we won't really prove that. So that means the number we want to calculate, 1 plus 2i to the power 3 plus 4i, can be calculated as 1 plus 2i cubed times 1 plus 2i to the fourth power, all raised to the ith power. And that'll be how we want to do this. That's, I think, maybe the simplest way of approaching this problem. Okay, well, notice we're going to need a 1 plus 2i cubed as well as a 1 plus 2i to the fourth. So we should probably calculate some powers of 1 plus 2i. So let's start with 1 plus 2i squared, which we can just get by multiplying it out. So that's 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 2i. So let's see. We have 1 times 1 is obviously equal to 1. 2 times 2 is equal to 4, but it's attached to i squared, so that's going to be minus 4. And then we'll have 4 times i. That comes from the 2i times 1 and the other 2i times 1. Okay, so putting this all together, we see that this is negative 3 plus 4i. So that's our 1 plus 2i squared. And now we can calculate 1 plus 2i cubed. That ends up being 1 plus 2i times negative 3 plus 4i. Because it's really just 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 2i squared. So let's see. We can multiply that out, and we'll get 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. And then we have to subtract 8 from the i squared term, so that gives us negative 11. And for our imaginary part, you'll see we get minus 2i. That's because we get a minus 6i from this and a plus 4i from this. And then finally, for 1 plus 2i to the fourth power, we in fact get negative 7 minus 24i. So I obviously didn't work out the details for that, but they follow exactly the same as the calculations that we just made. Okay, so now we have enough powers of this number 1 plus 2i to, you know, do a couple more steps at least. Okay, so we can take this 1 plus 2i cubed and rewrite it as negative 11 minus 2i. And then we can take this 1 plus 2i to the fourth, and that'll be negative 7 minus 24i, and then we're raising that to the ith power. Now we'd like to express this guy, this negative 7 minus 24, using our polar form here. So we'd first like to calculate the modulus, or that component r over there, which is the distance from the origin. 
So let's notice in this case, the r is equal to the square root of 7 squared plus 24 squared. So a routine arithmetic problem tells you that that is 25. So I think that's pretty interesting. 7, 24, and 25 make a Pythagorean triple. I think that is pretty nice in this case. And then we need theta to be defined so that tangent of theta is equal to 24 over 7. But it's actually a little bit more restrictive than that because theta takes on multiple values as it goes between 0 and 2 pi. We want to keep in mind that theta has to be over here in the third quadrant. And we know it has to be in the third quadrant because, because notice the real and the imaginary parts are both negative, and that occurs over there in this third quadrant. And we can't really get a nice closed form for theta. I mean, that's pretty typical unless you have really nice numbers, so we won't even try. We'll just call it theta. Okay, so now let's go from there. So we have this is negative 11 minus 2i. And now we have this is, let's see, 25 to the i times, let's see, e to the i times theta all raised to the i power. So something like that. But using exponent rules, we can simplify this thing right here. And that simplifies to e to the minus theta because we have e to the i squared. So that's a real component. We can bring that out. We have e to the minus theta times minus 11 minus 2i. Just keeping in mind that this theta is the angle over here in the third quadrant. So that tangent of theta is equal to 24 over 7. And then, before you forget about it, we also have to calculate this 25 to the i power. But this is actually a little bit tricky, 25 to the i. We're going to use a little bit of a trick for rewriting exponentials. So 25 to the i is the same thing as e to the i times the natural log of 25. And that's because e to the natural log of 25 is just 25. And so that gets back to this. But then from here, we can expand this using Euler's formula. So doing that, we'll get the cosine of the natural log of 25 plus i times the sine of the natural log of 25. Okay, so that's in fact what this 25 to the i is. Okay, so let's see, we have e to the minus theta first and then minus 11 minus 2i and then times the cosine of the natural log of 25 plus i times the sine of the natural log of 25. Now we can start putting this together. Maybe we could multiply out these two complex numbers that are now in rectangular form. So we have this e to the minus theta out front. I might leave that out front for the whole time. And then for my real part over here, I'll have minus 11 times the cosine of the natural log of 25. And then I'll have plus 2 times the sine of the natural log of 25. So just like I said, that is my real part. I get that from multiplying the two real parts as well as the two imaginary parts, keeping in mind that i times i is negative 1. So negative 2i times i is positive 2. And then for my imaginary part, I have plus i times, let's see what we're left with. We'll have a minus 2 times the cosine of the natural log of 25. And then a minus 11 times the sine of the natural log of 25. Great. And I think that's probably about as simple as you can make this. So just to look in the end, what do we have? Our number 1 plus 2i to the power 3 plus 4i simplifies down to e to the minus theta where theta is the number between pi and 3 pi over 4 such that the tangent of theta is equal to 24 over 7. And then we have minus 11 cosine of natural log of 25 plus 2 sine natural log of 25 
plus i times negative 2 cosine natural log of 25 minus 11 sine natural log of 25. And I think that's maybe as good as we can get. Maybe if you see a better way to write this down, maybe other than sort of this one right here, which is pretty nice, you know, looking back on the whole thing, write it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.